All right, guys, as we continue talking about quadratics, we're going to look at something called the zero product property. Um, so let's first, before we do that, just look at a couple of equations. The first one here, f of x equals x squared, that one is quadratic. Um, so what this is asking us is what x value would make our function equal zero. So if I were to set my function equal to zero and solve for x, I just have x squared equals zero. Um, and if I take the square root to get rid of uh, the squared, the only thing that x could equal here is zero. Um, on the second one, if I wanted to find the x value that would make this equal zero, again, I would set it equal to zero, add three to both sides, uh, and then I would know that x would have to equal three. So in order to find um, what makes a function equal zero, we just simply set it equal to zero and then solve for x. Um, so if we have a quadratic that's in factored form, so we'll remember when we did x factoring, um, if it's already in this x or this factored form, um, what this really is is just two numbers multiplied together depending on what x is. So for example, let's say I wanted to find f of 5. If I go ahead and plug 5 in for x, I would get 5 plus 1 times 5 minus 7, right? Um, which is the same as 6 times negative 2. So my point here is just simply that if I know what x is, or if I choose a value for x and plug it in, um, and then simplify, this really is just two numbers multiplied together, right? Um, let's try a couple other numbers to plug in. So let's say I want to find f of 2. I, if I'm looking for f of 2, that would just be 2 plus 1 times 2 minus 7. So again, it really is just two numbers multiplied together. 3 times negative 5, which is negative 15. So what happens when I choose, let's say, f of 7? Let's actually move this down here. So f of 7, that would be equal to 7 plus 1 times 7 minus 7, or 8 times 0, which is just 0. So anytime one of my numbers, one of my factors goes to 0, the entire thing is going to equal 0. <clears throat> so the other number in this first one that could make this whole thing goes to 0 is if x were equal to negative 1. Um, if f, x were equal to negative 1, I would get negative 1 plus 1 times negative 1 minus 7, or 0 times negative 8, which again is 0. Um, so let's look at the second one now, thinking about which values would actually make this equal 0. So just looking at x plus 2, um, I could do what I did on the previous slide. I could set that equal to 0. So that means if x is negative 2, and I go ahead and plug it that in, if I find f of negative 2, that's going to give me negative 2 plus 2 times negative 2 plus 9, or 0 times 7, which equals 0. Okay, so what's the other number here that would make this expression go to 0? That would be negative 9, because that would make our second term go to 0, and then I'd have 0 times negative 7. So that's the premise here of the zero product property. The zero product property is just um, simply that if I take two numbers, like a times b, it is going to equal zero if a or b equals zero, right? Because if I multiply any number times zero, it's always going to equal zero. Or if I know that two numbers that are multiplied together equal zero, I know that one of them would have to be zero, okay? Um, then down here it says zero in uh, quotations. So that's just because oftentimes we call the solutions to a quadratic are sometimes called zeros, okay? And that's because of this property. If I have, say, x plus 2 times x minus 1, um, I can find the solutions or the zeros or what makes this thing actually equal zero 
by taking each of these little factors and setting them equal to zero and then solve for x. Uh, so I would subtract two from both sides would give me x equals negative two. Here I would add one to both sides which would give me x equals one. So these are the solutions to this equation. They are the values that actually make this equation true. They make it equal zero. So that's why these special solutions are called zeros. Okay, so let's go ahead and practice with this. If I'm asked to find the zeros of a function, that's exactly what it's asking me to do, is to take each factor. Well, first of all, just take the entire thing and set it equal to zero. If this, if x plus one times x minus seven is going to equal zero, that means that either this number or this number has to be zero in order to make it true. So that means there's two options. There are two solutions that can make this equation equal zero. And to find them, we just take each factor and set them equal to zero. Um, on most of these, it's really not very hard to figure that out because it's just going to be the opposite sign of this one, right? Negative one plus one is zero. Seven minus seven is zero. Um, but what we're really doing is we're taking each of these little factors, they're called linear factors because x is to the first degree on both of them, and we're setting them equal to zero, and we're solving for x. And that gives us what's called the zeros, which is the solution to, um, for x if I set this equal to zero. Okay, so try another one. If I set this equation equal to zero, that means either x plus six has to equal zero, or x minus four has to equal zero. So set them each equal to zero separately and solve for x. So subtract six from both sides. There's one. Add four to both sides. There's two. Okay. Um, this one right here is not quadratic because there are three x's multiplied together. If I were to multiply everything out here, it would actually be cubic. But the the principle still applies. If anyone of these is equal to zero, right? When I set it, or if I want this whole thing to equal zero, if any one of these numbers ends up being zero, zero times any other numbers is gonna make the whole thing zero. So same thing, set each factor equal to zero and solve for, oops, x minus five equals zero, and solve for x. So on this one, I would subtract two from both sides to get negative two. On this one, I would subtract nine from both sides to get negative nine. And on this one, I would add five to both sides to get five. So those would be the three zeros or solutions to this function. Okay, let's try a few more. So um, on this one, notice that my second factor has a number in front of x. So that's why it's a little bit um, risky to just change the sign of these because on this one it's going to be a little bit different but same thing set it equal to zero take each factor separately set them equal to zero and solve for x so on the first one it is just the opposite it's negative six because i would subtract six from both sides um, on the second one i have one more step i have to do right in order to get x by itself i would have to add four but then i would also have to divide by three so 3x equals 4, divide both sides by 3. Um, so my 0 would be 4 thirds. Um, on the second one, I have, again, 3x's instead of 2. But the same, the same principle still, still applies. Every x, every uh, factor with an x in it needs to be set to 0. So the x out front that's just an x, that is just going to be 0 because um, there's nothing to solve there. The other two here we will need to go ahead and solve. So here, subtract four. So notice that the number of x's in the equation is the number of zeros that there should be or solutions that it will have. Um, so five x equals four divided by five. So x equals four fifths of my third zero. So there should be a zero for each factor that contains an x. Now this third one, there is a two out front, <clears throat> but that two does not have an x, right? It wouldn't make sense to set that one equal to zero because I would have two equals zero. So if it's just a number out front that doesn't have an x, 
I'm not going to worry about that one because if either of these other two factors go to zero, it's going to make the whole thing equal to, equal to zero. And that first one doesn't have a variable in it, right? So there's nothing I could, no x value I could plug in that would change that too. Um, the other two factors, since they have x's, those are the ones that will matter. So on this one, I have x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 16. Again, I have the same number of zeros as there are factors that have x's in them. All right, guys, good luck with this one. Um, it should be pretty quick. Um, I hope you're hanging in there. Hopefully, we can someday be back together in class. Have a good day.